Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kids Worship Halftime Show. I'm super excited to see you. <laughs> Why are you squinting? Well, sometimes when you can't see well, you squint your eyes because it helps you focus. You know, it helps you take a closer look. Faith is kind of like that. Sometimes in order to trust God, we have to focus and take a closer look since we can't actually see God. Well, we're defining faith this summer as faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. You'll see what we mean in a minute, but first let's take a look at this week's Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapters 11 and 12. Gotta have a little faith, 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 faith. Keep the faith. Take a leap of faith. You know, a lot of people toss around the word faith lately. We say you can break the faith or just take it all on blind faith. But true faith isn't blind at all. It's much more than just an inspirational word. True faith has to do with believing in all the things you can't see because you start with what you can see. Now, we can't see God with our physical eyes, but we can see the stories of people who came before us. Um, they lived in a broken world like we do, but they chose to follow God. They chose to trust his promise that one day he would send a rescuer that would make everything right again. The writer of uh, Hebrews in the New Testament tells us about some of these men and women in God's story. People like Noah, people like Abraham. Abraham. When God called Abraham, he was already getting old. He and his wife, Sarah, didn't have kids. Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God was planning on sending his rescuer as one of Abraham's great, 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 etc. grandchildren. But still, even though Abraham had God's promise, he still couldn't see the one God was sending. Still, Abraham went on a wild adventure following God's call, and even his descendants, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, all chose faith in God. Moses, too, was called by God from the fiery heart of a burning bush. Even though he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to stand with his own people and face Pharaoh's anger to win freedom. We read about it like this in the book of Hebrews. Moses suffered shame because of Christ. He thought it of great value. See, when you check out Hebrews, you discover this huge list of people who followed God by faith, so many that the writer just stops trying to list all of them. Oh, but we can't forget Israel's most important king, David. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Even though God had promised David would be king though, David spent years on the run from King Saul, fearing for his life. Still, he chose to trust God. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. Now, none of these people in the Old Testament could see with their eyes how God was going to save his people, but they could see how he was working in their lives, how their needs were being met. So they chose to believe in his greater plan. They chose faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Now, here's where the story turns. In Hebrews, we discover that none of those people in the Old Testament received what God had promised here on earth. That's because God had planned something better for us. So they would only be made perfect together with us. God's plan includes all of us from the very beginning of creation. So at just the right moment, at the perfect point in time, God sent his rescuer, the hero, his very own son, Jesus. Jesus showed us how to live. He showed us what God was like, and he told us the most important thing. If you love one another, everyone will know you are my disciples. Love God, love others. 
It's the heart of the whole story. But then, Jesus was killed, and his friends thought the story was finished. Period. Dot. The end. Until God raised him back to life. Jesus has defeated death, and those who follow him can live with him forever. But how do you follow someone you can't see? Well, that brings us back to faith. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith, and he is the one who completes this journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. So think about him. Then you won't lose hope. The early believers, Peter and John and other followers of Jesus, had seen him teach and heal. They saw him after God raised him to life. But after Jesus returned to heaven, the believers continued to live by faith. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Because of what the new Christians in the early church had seen, they could believe in what they could not yet see, the end of the story, where God makes everything right. They kept the faith, and because they did, we can choose faith too. Welcome back. So this month we're talking about what? Who remembers? Faith, yes. You've probably heard that word before. There are some even well-known phrases about faith that some people say all the time. Like, keep the faith. Or faith can move mountains. Or take a leap of faith. Yeah, all of those phrases are very popular. I'm sure you've heard them all. But the best place to learn about faith is the Bible. See, we can't see God, but we do have God's word right here among us. Inside these pages, we can find the stories of people who came before us. The writer of the book of Hebrews explained faith this way, okay? If these verses sound familiar, it's because the first part is our memory verse that um, we just learned. Let me find it really quick. So what is your favorite like faith saying, Ms. Kristen? I think I like keep the faith. Keep the faith? Keep yeah. the faith. If you're feeling down, yeah. continue to move forward, forward and keep and the faith that things are gonna turn around. I like that, I like that. Okay, here we go. Hebrews 11, verses one through two, okay? So, here's how the author of Hebrews describes faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. I love that. We can learn so much from the people throughout history who chose to continue to have faith because they lived in a broken world just like we do. That's right. The writer of Hebrews reminds us about some of those people, those men and women in God's story. People like Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph they all chose to put their faith in who? In God. And what about Moses? God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And we can't forget about David. He was Israel's greatest king. See, all of these people and so many more chose to have faith, but none of them actually saw God's plan like come true. Which brings us to our bottom line for this week. You can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. Ask God to help you choose faith this week. I love that. Until next time, this is the Halftime Show. Bye, guys.